welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii. Uh, you're watching Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. To strike out and to start your own business is always a challenging one. It's not for everyone. And it's also well known that it's difficult to start up a business here in Hawaii, given our geographic isolation. At the same time, entrepreneurial spirit is thriving in this community. In a recent study, Hawaii has been ranked the eighth in the nation with the most entrepreneurial activities. Of course, there's a lot of media coverage of high-tech startup, but um, I'm sure that if you look around in our community, there are different businesses starting up by bis uh, different people, including very young entrepreneurs. Today with me is, uh, is my guest, Nikki Libarius, who is the owner of Hawaii, um, Hawaii Doggy Bakery. Welcome, Nikki, and tell us about your business, um, the Hawaii Doggy Bakery. Well, Hawaii Doggy Bakery mm -hmm. is Hawaii's first bakery for dogs. It mm -hmm. was uh, founded in 1998 by okay. two sisters, mm -hmm. and um, it was created because one of their dogs was pregnant, and they wanted to find some treats that were healthy and good for her. She couldn't find anything that was store-bought, um, so they developed some treats that were healthy, no salt, butter, sugar, preservatives, and they worked with their vet, Dr. Skillman. And from that, the Hawaii Doggy Bakery idea was born. Okay. Uh, at the time, there was nothing like that, no kind of the specialized dog businesses that we have today. Uh -huh. So it's really exciting. Um, and then she did that for a, a, a little over 15, or under 15 years. Okay. And then my family, uh, in January 2012, became the new owners. Mm -hmm. And we have just been proud. We were customers before, and we're proud to continue on uh, the mission mm -hmm. that she, uh, Jen and Trudy, started. So it's the, the business actually started in 1998, yes. and I know on your website there was a story about a little bit more details about how you and your sister um, took over the bakery. Can mm -hmm. you show? Uh, can you tell us that? And I think in the meantime, producer, if I can ask you to show um, image six, um, that would be Nikki, you and your sister Tasha, mm -hmm. right? So. So um, I am one of the founders of Shiba Inu Hawaii, which is a social club for Shiba Inu dogs. Okay. And so that's how I kind of got into like the dog world and dog community, mm -hmm. and did that for about a year. And we knew uh, Hawaii Doggy Bakery owners and the products, of course. Thank you, producer. <laughs> and uh, and at the same time, um, my mom had been saying like, you know, if you and your sister ever want to do something, anything, we have a little bit of money saved away, and if you tell us, you know, put together something real and, and give us a little presentation, then we might be willing to invest. So um, I had heard that Hawaii Doggy Bakery was closing and I kind of panicked because I love the bakery and uh -huh. I reached out to Jen and I was like, what's going on? Are you guys selling? Are you closing? And she's like, no, no, we're, we're not closing forever. It's just a holiday mm -hmm. thing. But are you interested in, in selling, uh, purchasing? And, mm -hmm. and I was like, um, well, I don't know, maybe I am. And having my mom's words in the back of my mind, uh -huh. I was like, oh, maybe I, maybe I could be a business owner. So okay. I talked well, to my sister. Now, <laughs> you're, that's amazing. Now, your mom says she has put aside some money mm -hmm. and she's willing to invest. So yes. is your mom an entrepreneur? Herself? No. Oh. I think she thought we would buy property or something. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you proposed this idea to her, oh, so she asked you to make a pitch to her basically. Yeah. So what did and uh, what did you and Tasha, your sister? It did? was funny because mm -hmm. we were literally on vacation uh -huh. in on Kauai on the beach. And me okay. and my sister are on the beach with our notepads and uh -huh. trying to figure out like, okay, why why is this a good idea? Mm -hmm. And you know, from what we knew, I mean, we, we were on vacation, so we didn't have any figures or anything. Mm -hmm. So you know, we put it together, and then we just grabbed my mom and like, sit down. You know, here's what we need to mm -hmm. talk to you about. And she was like, what? She was really surprised. <laughs> oh, she was. Yeah. Now I guess um, since you were on vacation when mm -hmm. this whole idea came up, you must be in a very relaxed mode. So. Yeah. Uh, your presentation went well, so your, your it mom went well as it could. Yeah, and she she was she was interested. Oh, okay. you know, she was ready to start some more conversation. Okay. You know. um, <laughs> now I. I guess I also have, well, I, I went through school, I got my business degree, and of course they always say when you purchase a business, you have to do your due diligence, you, mm -hmm. do, you have to do your homework to research about the viability of the business. So what was that process like for you? 
Um, you know, it was just a lot of conversations mm -hmm. with Jen, um, asking for figures and information, mm -hmm. um, and then just a lot of talks with the family mm -hmm. and just figuring out whether uh, running some numbers and figuring out uh, whether we could do this financially and, mm -hmm. of course, all the work that was involved. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we don't know too many. All my family is all... Um, counselors and teachers and nurses so uh -huh. there's not really any entrepreneur or entrepreneurs in my family uh -huh. so yeah uh, we kind of just just did it I guess <laughs> as best as we could. How did you and your sister decide to do this? Is there one person who is stronger in terms of wanting to take over this business? It's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> so your sister is tagging yeah. along. So yeah. No, she thought it was oh. a great idea, and okay. she loves Hawaii Doggy Bakery. But I'm the I'm the crazy one, the uh, creative one, the one okay. who really wanted to do it. Okay. <laughs> now um, we show a picture of your sister, and I know that your sister uh, graduated from Shiloh College of Business. Mm -hmm. um, so, are you the older one, or is she the? I'm older. Oh, you're the older mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So, how did you convince her to go along with what you? would like to do? Um, or was there a lot of convincing to do? Not really, really, yeah. She just, I think she was in a position where she also wanted to do something different, mm. um, and she was just excited for the challenge. Uh, she was right there with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you talked about your sister, but I know that there's another owner, right? Mm -hmm. So there are three of you. Can you yes. tell us about the other person? That's then? my mom. Okay. And she's a silent owner, or okay. it's as silent as we can keep her, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, that she really wanted this mm -hmm. to be for me and my sister to do something get together and and su be successful and kind of learn how to work together as as siblings. Um, and uh, but she's definitely there to help support. Um, she will help when we have busy season. She'll help us bake and okay. package and sell. Okay. And then she's our, a great cheerleader and she's also a great critic too. So she'll you know tell us when she thinks something's not a good idea. Or, or a great idea, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> now, your mom is a silent partner. So between you and your sister, what are your... Res well, okay, l let me ask. What, what strengths do you bring into the business for you and Tasha? For me, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the creative one. Mm -hmm. um, I've got the, uh, millions of ideas mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, my sister, uh, she's primarily in charge of the production side. Okay. So um, she handles like the kitchen, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I do. Ba we both bake, but she's okay. mainly there um, maintaining the ingredients. She does all the farmers markets that we still do. Mm -hmm. We used to do more. Now we only do a few. W what do you mean the farmer markets? That so does she actually go out and um, sell them? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. We before we had our shop, mm -hmm. we would do farmers markets, craft fairs, expos. Mm -hmm. um, when we got the shop, we cut down. We only kept a few of them mm -hmm. um, because we really like the markets, but also because we made friends with some of the farmers there. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, she she likes to maintain the friendship, and then we get our uh, fresh produce from them as well. So really? a, a lot of our pro things, uh, ingredients come from Hawaii and so local farmers. So the ingredients that you put in your doggy treats. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that you're the creative one. You come up with really great ideas. I guess my question is, how do you come up with ideas of all the different treats? And I guess um, if the camera you can show uh, we can show some of the products that um, Nikki brought mm -hmm. um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yeah. what you brought with you I mean some of the products mm -hmm. were handed down to us so mm -hmm. for instance a doggy bento is mm -hmm. one of our more popular and well-loved items mm -hmm. it's made out of different shapes you might recognize and local food dim sum manapua okay um, and then these are biscuits that are our classic flavors that were handed down to us and this is our pup cake that a sweet potato flavor. People like to do it for birthdays because we can um, personalize it. Um, so we, a lot of that is set, but mm -hmm. um, we take inspiration for our new products from like different holidays. So mm -hmm. for instance, uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. Mm -hmm. We're doing pumpkin pies for dogs. Oh, okay. Um, and then uh, Christmas will do like candy canes uh -huh. and Christmas cupcakes. And then we also take uh -huh. inspiration from our okay. uh, customers as well because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they requested different things of us like they've been asking for gluten-free products for oh, so okay. long okay. Um, and we finally did it you know inspired by our, our customers okay well um, producer if you could show us the birthday picture that would be good too so yeah. is this something that 
tell us about this picture here. That is, so the cake is our classic bone cake. It comes in either banana or Okinawan sweet potato flavor. Oh and then we can personalize it with happy birthday or whatever uh -huh. you want us to write. Uh -huh. And then this picture in particular was a birthday party that we catered. Oh, okay. So, um, for the dogs. For the dogs, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. So um, on the left, there's our waffles. It's also a popular item. It's like a uh, waffle with cream cheese and Okinawan sweet potato. Uh -huh. And in the middle is our lasagna, which uh -huh. is also really popular. Oh um, and then on the right are some of the bento pieces. It looked like a big party. How many dogs there were there? Were oh, well, yes, there were about 15, I think. Okay. But there were five birthday dogs. It was the mom and then the four babies. <laughs> all had the <laughs> same birthday. Really? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, they all look so tempting. Um, when you do the baking, do you actually try it? We've tried everything. Yes. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> how, how does it taste? Um, it's a little bland because oh. we don't put any sugar or butter oh, okay. or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty good. Like my, um, my boyfriend, Chris, who's also part of the business, mm -hmm. he'll eat our banana muffins if we have some leftovers. <laughs> They're like banana bread. So really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean uh, after the show I can try a little? <laughs> if you really want to, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, so where do you do the baking? We do the baking um, off-site. We have a little kitchen. It's actually um, on my parents' property. Okay. Um, they used to rent it out to someone, mm -hmm. and then um, we took it over for our kitchen. <laughs> okay. And when you do all these baking, um, are there regulations that you have to comply with? Not for dogs, mm. actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot less regulation um, than there is for, for mm -hmm. humans. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you said that, well, you are you're quite strict with the ingredients that you use. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, we maintain a standard for mm -hmm. ourselves, even though we're not being regulated mm -hmm. by you know, whoever. Mm -hmm. um, we bake things as fresh as possible. Mm -hmm. We don't put any salt, butter, sugar, preservatives. Mm -hmm. If there's any, like, meat with fat, we drain, we take out the fat out of that. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're, our main goal is healthy treats, mm -hmm. you know. There's, our things are fresh, they haven't been sitting on the shelves for months and months. Mm -hmm. And we just want to provide healthy treats for dogs and then do something fun with it. You know, the fun shapes, the local flair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, you know what, when we come back, uh, w let's take a short break and then when we come back, um, I'd like to ask you a little bit more about the pet industry here in Hawaii. I guess when I first, when we first talked about this interview, I thought, oh, I don't know <laughs> anything about the pet industry here. Mm -hmm. So we'll go on a short break. My guest here is Nikki Labarius. She is the co-owner of Hawaii Doggy, Doggy Bakery. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Kenneth Lawson. I'm your host here at Life in the Law. I'm really interested in law as I practiced it for 18 years before coming to Hawaii. I practiced criminal law and civil rights law on the mainland. Now I teach law at the University of Hawaii Law School, William S. Richardson School of Law. And I bring in guests who are very current on legal issues that affect your life here in Hawaii. Uh, come and join me every Wednesday at 1 p.m. as we explore how the law affects you, how the law is changing, and why it's important that you should care about what's going on in your community. See you then. Welcome back to ThinkTech Hawaii Biz Ed Spotlight. If you're just joining us, my guest is Nikki Laborius. She is the co-owner of Hawaii Doggy Bakery. Now, Nikki, you were just telling us about the really fresh ingredients you put into the, um, the different type of products. And they actually look really, really tempting. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know that before, before the show or before the break, um, I commented that I don't really know much about the pet industry here in Hawaii. So you're the expert, so <laughs> tell us what we should know about it. Well, it's definitely the big general supply stores like Petco and mm -hmm. PetSmart. Mm -hmm. um, and they offer a wide range of products for all kinds of pets, not just dogs. You mm -hmm. know, there's cats, fish, birds. Mm -hmm. And then there's a smaller business mm -hmm. who also do kind of general pet supply mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's this even smaller, more niche businesses. And, you know, I'm in the dog industry, so that's my focus is, is the dog one. So there's mm -hmm. dog walkers, doggy daycares. There's other okay. people who do treats like us. There's doggy designers who do clothes, mm -hmm. leashes, collars, um, doggy massage, there's even somebody who does like energy work and animal communication, you know, so, you know, like I know you have a beagle. Yeah, well, oh, okay. no, no, even more than that. Oh. So like, 
um, you have a beagle, maybe mm -hmm. your beagle is barking and you can't figure out, you know, why they're barking. Well, they specialize in communicating with the animal and can figure out, you know, wow. why your dog is barking. Maybe they're stressed or, uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, it's fascinating, all the different things. Uh, now I know that you are the creative one, you brought in all these treats, but at the same time you're starting off different, different product lines also for dogs. So tell us about mm -hmm. that. Um, for us, mm -hmm. we are um, we mostly do treats, but okay. recently started doing um, hand painted signs like this one over here. Okay, it's made from reclaimed wood. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I don't know if you can see that it's blue. Mm -hmm. okay. It's blue. Okay, let's <laughs> tilt the sign. Yeah, so it looks sandy, great. Tall, yeah, soft. and so it's made from reclaimed wood. I get it uh -huh. from um, Reuse Hawaii. Oh, okay. So that kind of just stemmed from a. Uh, stress relief. When I'm really stressed, I tend to get really creative, uh, which is great though because that uh, will lead me in a new direction, like the signs. So those have been doing pretty well. Um, wow. And then also in our shop, um, we brought in uh, other local artists and crafters, uh -huh. and they will do everything from like t-shirts and doggy rugs mm -hmm. and uh, doggy clothes. Mm -hmm. And we feel very fortunate that we're able to provide a place for our friends that we've made in from doing craft fairs and stuff to sell their products as well. well I was going to ask you earlier about collaboration. So you kind of answered that. So mm -hmm. even though it's, um, well, I'm sure you have competition because you said that there are other um, businesses that also provide dog treats. So who would you work together and, I mean, do, are there particular types of competitors? Um, do you see them as competitors? Um, there's people in Hawaii mm -hmm. who do dog treats. Mm -hmm. Mostly they're doing like something similar to our biscuit type mm -hmm. thing or mm -hmm. like jerky. Mm -hmm. There's not really anybody who's doing um, doggy bentos or dog <laughs> pup cakes, you know, so we're, mm -hmm. we're the only ones who do that. Okay. But uh, we'd love to collaborate with different um, other dog business mm -hmm. owners. And actually, yeah, I, I know um, the, some of the owners of the other tree oh, companies. Okay. And, you know, we, uh, we, uh, a couple of years ago, uh -huh. we participated in a doggy wedding. Oh. And so that was great. Two dogs got married. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh I saw God. your face. You were like, what? Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And so um, the person who organized that, mm -hmm. she's actually the one who does um, energy work and communication. So she brought together all these different um, business owners. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of great because besides the dog wedding, mm -hmm. we got to talk together and I got to meet some people, um, mm -hmm. competitors and also in the industry who I haven't met yet. And then, um, and I'm also part of a group. I'm one of the founders actually, it's called Pacific Pooch Hui. And we Pacific are- Pacific Pooch Hui. Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, we're dog business owners. So okay. we get together once a month uh -huh. to kind of talk about um, what's going on in the dog world industry to share what we're doing and then how we can support each other and then also like dog rescues we try to give back to the community as well. You talk about giving back to the community and I know when you were um, talking about the signs you got the wood from uh, Reuse Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of leads to the question about mission um, of your business because I remember when I interviewed Erin, the mm -hmm. chocolatier a month ago, um, she donates quite a bit of her profit to charitable causes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess what is your social mission because it seems that, especially for young entrepreneurs, um, you are trying to accomplish um, something, uh, uh, maybe a social cause by starting your own business? Mm -hmm. We definitely feel very strongly mm -hmm. about making uh, the dog community uh, pe bring people together mm -hmm. and to, to give back. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we've done are um, we will do like photo booths in our store mm -hmm. and in order to get a photo of your dog and we do something like really cute like an Easter basket mm -hmm. or something. Um, you have to give a donation to, we'll pick a dog uh, mm -hmm. rescue. And usually we like to pick the smaller ones because they don't, you know, uh, they don't have as many resources as some of the bigger shelters oh, and stuff. Okay. And they need uh, a little bit more help. Mm -hmm. So uh, we picked uh, uh, some of, one of them was Italian Greyhound Rescue. Mm -hmm. And so we collected treats and toys and blankets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to do things as much as we can. Um, if we have leftover treats, if we did like a big event or something, mm -hmm. we'll sometimes drop it off at a shelter if we have extra food mm -hmm. to give back to the dogs. 
who are there. I have to say, this idea of giving back to the community, um, it, it only came to me, I guess, um, when I got older. But it mm. seems that this is really important, especially for younger people. Do, do you think that's I the case? I read an article mm -hmm. about that, I mm -hmm. think. I think I didn't realize it because I was living it. But, uh, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, I feel like, yeah, a lot of um, people my age are, are um, we're, I, maybe it's because of the internet and technology mm -hmm. that the world is smaller, you know, mm -hmm. we can see more of what's going on and not just like our little lives that are problems or whatever. We see that there's a bigger picture and there's more that we should be concerned about than mm -hmm. just us. Um, let's go back to the, do you call it the Pooch Pacific Hui? Is uh, that the Pacific Pooch Hui? <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, part of it that piqued my interest is you said you're um, bis uh, dog business owners and you provide each other support. Mm -hmm. Now, as, an, as a young entrepreneur, um, really hats off to you to be willing to take the plunge to start your own business. But there, there are, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges. So, um, especially when you said your family, you, you didn't come from a family who start their own business. So when you run into challenges or issues, where do you go? Um, it depends mm. on the challenge, I think. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll look online. That's probably the first thing I'll do because mm -hmm. you know it's so fast and easy. I'll just mm -hmm. Google the problem mm -hmm. and see what I can find. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really lucky in that I met a lot of business owners who are just great, and I love them. Mm -hmm. And some of them, um, depending on the problem, I can talk to them. Like I've made friends with uh, Sweet Revenge, Honolulu. Oh, I don't know what, if you've heard what of them. They do pies. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. They just opened up uh, their store in uh, Jabsum, the okay. Kakako uh -huh. UH, and uh, she is kind of like my baking mentor because we would be next to each other at the farmer's market and then we just talk about like baking and stuff and yeah, she's doing it for humans and I'm doing it for dogs, but like, Kathy, I really want to do something mm -hmm. for uh, uh, Halloween, but I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. She'd be like, well, why don't you do this and mm -hmm. why don't you do this and mm -hmm. here's the ingredients you can use and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, but how can I make that into a dog mm -hmm. thing? And, yeah, mm -hmm. so I um, I really appreciate being able to talk to so many different business owners. So are there other community resources that you've utilized to help you grow your business? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, SCORE is a mm -hmm. big one, uh, S the SBA. Um, my Small Business Administration? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, my favorite is the, um, the Small Business Fair that they okay. put on twice a year. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Mm -hmm. um, it's free. And you can pick, they have a whole bunch of different workshops, mm -hmm. and depending on, you know, what you're going through at the time, you can pick a, a workshop for you. Mm -hmm. And then they usually have, like, a talk of successful business owners. Oh, okay. So um, my favorite was one time they had um, Eddie Flores, who owns yeah. l and uh -huh. And I thought that I, I really enjoyed his uh, talk because he, he's one of the only uh, small business chains, I guess, that's made it to, like, the mainland and international. Mm -hmm. So just to hear him talk about his experiences was just priceless. Mm -hmm. I shook his hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when you went to seminars like that, mm -hmm. um, what type of entrepreneurs do you see? Are they about your, um, are they starting new like you? Um, there's all kinds of mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. They're just in all different levels. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are new. Mm -hmm. Might have been the workshops I picked, though. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, some of them haven't haven't started yet, so they're looking to give themselves as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. Some of them um, had started and, like me, realized mm -hmm. there was so much more involved mm -hmm. with the business. You know. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, now, you started your business in January 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I know that your family gave you a lot of support, but um, Tell us what are some of the challenges for you. Uh, definitely, even though my family gave us support, mm -hmm. um, switching our relationship from just family mm -hmm. to business has been challenging. You know, um, how come? What, well, what I mean, we had different uh, relationships and different ways of interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, in the beginning. Uh, my sister, I always remember, we I forget, I don't even remember what we were arguing about, but uh -huh. I think she said, like, you're not my mom. And I was like, I'm not your, yes, I'm not your mom, but uh -huh. I'm your co-owner, uh -huh. and, you know, we need to work together. And mm -hmm. I said, I, um, I didn't talk to her after that, but I, it, something changed, I think, after that little little fight, and mm -hmm. we realized that we need to um, change our relationship, and we, you know, we're not sisters, we're co-owners, so we mm. need to 
kind of handle things differently. Really? Mm -hmm. So is it easy to have, um, I guess, a break in, in the sense that, okay, when you are doing business together, you're co-owners, but at the end, your sisters. So oh, how yeah. does that affect uh, y your relationship? I mean, it can't be just all business mm -hmm. or all family relations, right? Yeah. So how do you balance that? I mean, that was a learning process. That mm -hmm. was hard mm -hmm. because for me, I just like, I work, 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 and I won't stop. Mm -hmm. And so I had to set boundaries. You know, mm -hmm. I had to say like, no, we're, no, we're not going to talk about business right now. Like, sometimes my boyfriend, he'll have to be like, we'll be at family dinner. He'll be like, okay, about it later, and I'm oh. like, right, we're at family dinner right now. <laughs> like, okay. you know, let's talk about something else. Okay. Yeah. What about with your mom? Even though she's the Saigon partner, um, are there, um, I guess, challenges having your mom as an investor of mm -hmm. the business? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. she's definitely, you know, a cheerleader, like I said. Mm -hmm. But um, I think because she's not a business owner and she's not in the day to day. Sometimes she'll approach um, problems differently, you know. She'll just be like, "Well, why don't you just, why don't you just do this?" And mm -hmm. I'm like, "I can't just do that, mom. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's other things involved." So mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's hard. But um, my mom is also kind of a workaholic too. So she has different folks areas too. So it works in our favor. So she's not always focused on us and oh, what we're good. doing. Now um, you've obviously have gone out, reach out to perhaps talk to other entrepreneurs. Um, my title of the program is actually Millennial Entrepreneur. So having owned your business for a couple of years, do you see that there are differences in the way younger generation run business as opposed to an older generation running business? I think the younger generation mm -hmm. definitely takes advantage of technology more. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their businesses are probably technology focused. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, yeah, I, I think th it moves quicker mm -hmm. um, in because there's so many things like social media, you know, things will just go out super fast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that because um, I, of course, belong to an older generation. Twitter, Instagram, I know about them, but I don't really know much about it. Mm -hmm. So what is your role and how does technology help you with your business? Um, well, like I said, you know, the social media, mm -hmm. it, it definitely has helped out mm -hmm. for us, especially, you know, new business owners, because when you think about, like, traditional or before before social media, mm -hmm. you might spend, like, thousands of dollars on a marketing budget, but with social media, you're able to keep mm -hmm. your costs down, mm -hmm. get the information out fast, um, quickly, and uh, then you can really focus on what matters, which, which is your customers, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to spend all this uh, time and resources on, on that. Okay, well, we're coming up on our second break. So after we come back, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about customers. My guest here is Nikki Labarius. She is the co-owner of Hawaii Doggy Bakery. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on the Think Tech Digital Series. The show is every Wednesday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and I want you to watch this show because... I think that when we talk with artists on the show about what they do, how they do it, and most importantly, why they do it, I believe that it resonates within each of us and we find something inside of ourselves that brings us closer to all of humanity. That's what arts are there to do, and that's what I'm here to do on this show. That's Center Stage. It's on every Wednesday from 2 to 3 o'clock. I hope to see you there. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Biz Ed Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. If you're just, just joining us, my guest is the co-owner of Hawaii Dog, Doggy Bakery, um, Nikki Libarius. Nikki, tell us um, who your customers are, and let me guess. Of course, these would be <laughs> the ones. Um, producer, if you don't mind sharing with us images one and two, please. Producer, may I have images one and two, please? Okay, thank oh. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I guess these would be your loyal customers, yes, right? Yes. <laughs> Isn't she cute? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she'll jump up on her table every time and look at them so oh longingly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, 
So who are really your customers then? Mm -hmm. um, well, obviously our customers are dog owners, mm -hmm. dog mm -hmm. lovers mm -hmm. um, in Hawaii, and then also on, um, on the mainland as well. Oh. Um, yes, we do ship to the mainland. So um, social media, again, <laughs> has helped us you know, to make the world smaller and to kind of uh, uh, reach out to mm -hmm. more people. Mm -hmm. um, so um, are there a lot of these uh, doggy bakery, um, or I I should say dog treat uh, businesses on the mainland. Mm -hmm. I, I presume that you would be competing with a lot more, but there are you have international or mainland customers. So There's definitely a lot of different options or mm -hmm. treats available. Mm -hmm. uh, so what? Uh, how do you engage them? How do you make them loyal customers of yours? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we definitely do what, what a lot of other companies do. We try to stay as top of mind as possible. Mm -hmm. We take advantage of any uh, PR opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, we're posting, we're you know, doing all that stuff. But I think what's really um, uh, strong for us is, you know, we're Hawaii's first bakery for dogs. It, mm -hmm. it was established in 1998. And so we've had decades of people who know and love our products. They recognize the doggy bento and mm -hmm. the pup cake, the lasagna. Um, you know, we have that, and then also just to also to keep uh, doing things new and being innovative for our customers, mm -hmm. and um, that's I think what helps engage them because they're excited about what we're going to do mm -hmm. next. You know, people call us and say like, "What are you doing for mm -hmm. Halloween? What are you doing this month?" Like, put me down. I'm like, uh, I don't know what we're doing yet, <laughs> but like, you know, let me get your information. And I'll call you back. Wow. So. That's yeah. amazing. Um, so I presume, again, technology plays a critical role in mm -hmm. engaging customers. Definitely. So it sounds like um, they also give you ideas on what to develop. Mm -hmm. So how, how big a role is that? Because I remember when I talked to Erin, she actually got a lot of ideas from um, her customers in mm -hmm. terms of what other products to create. Do you, do you get the same? Yeah, we do get uh, mm -hmm. quite a few, you know, uh, probably not as many as Erin, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are um, are happy with our products as there is, but like um, I mentioned, like the gluten-free was a big one, mm -hmm. so people always ask if we have something gluten-free, and we didn't for a long time, mm -hmm. but we finally do, so um, that's something uh, that our customers requested and we were oh. able to do, okay. but it's kind of more like I try to keep... Um, uh, keep in mind like the trends and what's going on, mm -hmm. not just in the dog world. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, The Walking Dead is one of the biggest TV shows that oh, just okay. premiered okay. last week. Okay. And in honor of that, we made Barking Dead cupcakes. So <laughs> yeah, they were they looked like little brains. Okay. And, oh yes, uh, I saw that on your website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how is that selling? Uh, well, that was last week, and oh, yeah, okay. it did well. And people came. Um, actually, it's Sunday was the premiere, and mm -hmm. they said they had to come down and get the, the brain cupcakes so that they could sit with their dog and watch The Walking Dead. <laughs> um, you obviously is very creative <laughs> and you draw upon different ideas. So how do you keep up with the trend? Because it sounds like it's not just trying to um, keep abreast of what's going on in the pet industry because you draw upon ideas from many different other sources. So mm -hmm. how do you do that? I think it's just social media, I'm, okay. a, you know, I'm just obsessed kind of okay. with, you know, checking my mm -hmm. whatever's going on mm -hmm. and, um, you know, if something, if something's really uh, resonating with people, mm -hmm. it'll just pop up again and again and again and be like, oh my God, why are you still talking about this, you mm -hmm. know, and then I'm like, well, there's a reason, mm -hmm. like maybe we should do something about mm -hmm. that. You've done a lot for the past two years. Um, in terms of growing a business. So um, what do you foresee in the next two years? Uh, we definitely mm -hmm. uh, are going to finish up, uh, continue, we're, we're renovating right now actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just took down a wall in our bakery. Okay. And uh, so we're going to expand. We're really excited to bring in more. Um, cause we, have, we keep needing new uh, creative people who are doing new things. Uh, we just met this girl who just, just started her business, actually, mm -hmm. um, doing little clay earrings. And she's um, she's so fast. Mm -hmm. I tell her that day, and then she's made like all these little dog earrings, mm -hmm. little paw prints. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about expanding our, um, our business to include more local uh, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. 
and um, doggy events. I, I used to do a lot more events with our Sheba Club, mm -hmm. and I just love events. That's kind of my background, mm -hmm. and um, I want to do more dog events in the future, not mm -hmm. just in our shop, but maybe like around uh, the island or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we do want to get our treats in other shops as well. Mm -hmm. Right now we're the only ones who sell them, but we want to expand our retail program. You definitely need a lot of resources <laughs> and perhaps advice and suggestions on growing your business. So if there are a couple, well, and I know that um, looking online, there are a lot of entrepreneurial organizations um, um, in the state that help to grow uh, businesses. So if there is if there are two things that you could get help with, what would they be? Uh, from different... Uh, yeah, from organizations or even from the state, from the university, um, something that could help you um, further expand your business, what would they be? Um, well, I, I, you know, like I said, the workshops and stuff that mm -hmm. like SCORE and mm -hmm. SGA put on, mm -hmm. I really like those. Okay. And so I, I subscribed to their emails. Um, like a couple weeks ago, they had an accounting one. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, like that is not my strong point. Like Chris <sighs> takes care of the okay. accounting and bookkeeping. Uh -huh. So like I took that class. It was my second time taking an accounting class. The first time, it went over my head. I couldn't wait to leave. <laughs> but this time, I don't know. I, uh -huh. I The teacher was really great. So okay. yeah, that's great. Uh -huh. um, and then I think uh, uh, that's, that's probably the main okay. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because um, not just for entrepreneurs, but when, when I talk, go out and talk to different industries, especially, uh, for example, healthcare, um, people who are in the clinical side, when they have to do accounting numbers, then that's when they say, oh, I can't <laughs> do that. Um, yeah. But I am glad you brought that up because I know when you went to UC, UC Irvine, you graduated with a drama degree. Yes. <laughs> um, and before you started your business, you were doing something else, mm -hmm. right? Tell us about that and um, perhaps more importantly, how has all those experience helped you with your business? So, um, yeah, I got a drama degree mm -hmm. from UC Irvine, mm -hmm. and then I went to University of Florida to study um, student affairs and higher education. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't finish my degree. We had, uh, my dad was sick, actually, mm -hmm. so I came home. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started working at Hawaii Pacific University in mm -hmm. the residence life department. Mm -hmm. um, and that was great because I got to learn. Um, I was put in a leadership role pretty quickly. Okay. Um, before I left there, I was in charge of the whole department. So. That, I mean, residence life, I don't know if you're familiar, it's like little microcosms, like there's everything, oh, okay. you know, so there's like not only taking care of just making sure you have a place to sleep, there's eating, um, there's making sure they're entertainment, they're mm -hmm. staying safe, uh, uh, crisis management, okay. and, um, and this is all with teenagers, you know, so it's especially dramatic and heightened. Okay. So I, I learned a lot from being uh -huh. at HPU. Okay. Um, and then being uh, in event production, mm -hmm. like weddings, I switched careers mm -hmm. to like weddings, private parties. Um, and that one, I think I learned a lot about like multitasking because um, with parties, you know, there's so much going on, like the food and um, the decor and the entertainment. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure and managing people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I didn't do them, but I assisted with that, mm -hmm. so I got to see, you know, how they were um, just handling everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of those things kind of helped to, um, even though I'm not doing the specific same things that I did before, mm -hmm. just like those concepts and those ideas kind of helped me to, um, to run my own business. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Now, you've changed careers. Uh, of course, initially when you were the director for Residence Life, it's you were saying that this is kind of along the line of what your family is doing. They're yes. all counselors. Yes. And then you switch career into um, event planning production. Mm -hmm. Now, it's another career switch. Do you think that typifies um, a lot of young people that, you know, they, they need constant changes? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's so much information coming out and so many opportunities, mm -hmm. actually, for, uh, for young people. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I mean, just like they say in, in colleges, it's typical for you to change your major. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing in life. You mm -hmm. change your uh, career, and hopefully, you're you're staying long enough to get something uh, 
that you can use and useful and to, to finally figure out what you want to do in life. Well, it sounds like what you have planned for your business, you seem to be diversifying all the different product lines. Now, um, you've been an entrepreneur for the last two years, uh, well, I guess almost three almost years three, now. Yeah. <laughs> um, what advice would you give for younger people who are interested in starting their own business? I would say um, don't get discouraged mm -hmm. too easily and, and work hard um, because and be patient. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when I first started the business, I thought, like, oh, I have all these um, I have all my dog experience, and I have, um, you know, the, uh, this established business, and you know, I'm just going to take over, and it's just going to not have any bumps. It's going to go smoothly, mm -hmm. and so it didn't take off right away. Mm -hmm. And you know, to, I kind of got a little disappointed. I was like, what's oh. going on? Like, why isn't it like, why isn't it booming? Uh -huh. And so I think because now um, nowadays there's this whole viral thing. You know, people expect a lot of times like a million views or like uh -huh. a lot of things you think mm -hmm. if you're not a huge success to mm -hmm. begin with then you're a failure mm -hmm. which is not true at all mm -hmm. you know so I think and I think a lot of young people might think that because of the way the world works right, right. now right. so I would say you know if you have a good idea mm -hmm. and it's something you're passionate about and you believe in it like don't give up just keep trying you might not you know only a couple people might notice you you might only sell two things at once but just keep going because you're going to make it. You just have to keep trying, be patient, work hard. <laughs> so how do you keep yourself motivated and engaged? I know you mentioned being patient and um, you believe in your, pa uh, in your passion, but um, you, you alluded to that. Younger people, they expect things to happen right away. I mm -hmm. guess it's like technology. You get an instant response. Mm -hmm. So uh, isn't there a disconnect there or yeah, how, how do you nurture this kind of qualities? Um, well, I think just like constantly trying new things, I uh -huh. think being creative kind of lends itself to that because you're constantly looking for different things to do and mm -hmm. um, different uh, ideas, you uh -huh. know, so that keeps me motivated. Uh -huh. And also um, just our customers, you know, mm -hmm. just different being in a shop and having different people come in, the dogs especially, mm -hmm. you know, they, they inspire me to, to keep going. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Nikki, Thank and you. I hope that we will have a chance to chat again. My guest is Nikki Liborio. She is the co-owner of Hawaii Doggy Bakery. Please stay tuned for our program next week. Aloha. <laughs>